We're now going to take a look at how Java Atomic Long and Atomic Boolean are implemented. And you'll see that they're very similar. And you'll also see that they build on those atomic primitives that come with Java Unsafe. Atomic Long, as the name suggests, contains a value, a field, that's possible to be updated atomically by various methods. And under the hood, it uses the unsafe compare and swap long method we just looked at. So here's what the implementation actually looks like. It's quite fascinating. You have a field called value, which as you can see is a volatile long. What does that mean? It means it can be read to and written to atomically, read from and written to atomically. And then it's going to have another private static field called value offset. And this implementation uses a very clever Java feature called reflection to go find out where in an object of type atomic long the value field starts in terms of bytes from the beginning of the object. So we're using reflection here to go and find out the field offset for this field, and we store it in that field. And every object will store that field in the same number of bytes from the beginning. So that's why we can store it as a static. So you can see static, uh, we can see the value offset is a static final long. And this is actually a static initializer. This, this is a way to initialize various static fields in the class when the, when the class is loaded. There's a method in, in the uh, unsafe class called get and add long. And uh, this is, this is a, another method that uses compare and swap long. So we talked about compare and swap long. Now we're going to take a look at get and add long. And what it's going to do, it's going to atomically update a value uh, at a particular offset in an object. So here's what happens. You can see that uh, it's past object O comes in as a parameter, the offset into that object, and the value we want to add to that object at that offset to that field. So then what it does is it goes ahead and will run this lock free compare and swap long method in a loop. As you can see, the offset that's passed in is relative to the object. This is a really funky thing. This is, this is kind of breaking the Java type system, but that's OK because it's unsafe. That's why it's called unsafe. So what we're going to do here is we're going to compare and swap at the object and the object's offset. We're going to go and look at that location in the object, treating it as a, a bucket of bytes, and go look at that location. And we're going to basically get the current value at that offset and store it in v, which is a long. We're going to do that as a volatile, so it's an atomic read of that value. And then delta is what's going to be added to the value, the current value, at that offset. So what we're doing is we're reading the value, and then, and this is so crazy, and then we're going to atomically take value v and add a new uh, delta to it, which, by the way, could be negative. You could you can add negative numbers, you can add positive numbers, and so on. And we're going to go ahead and update the value at that offset in this object if and only if it still has the same value it did when we read it up there. So we read it, and then we come down and we try to atomically update it. But we only atomically, we only succeed at trying to atomically update if its value is the same as when we read it with the call to get int volatile here. And why do you think we do that? Right? What's the reason why we only let this call succeed if the value there is equal to what we just read up there? What's the reason why we have to do that? Exactly. So this is to make sure that the reads are atomic, uh, the reads and writes are atomic, rather, the updates are atomic. So between the point where we read the value and the point where we tried to, to change it, as you just mentioned, another thread running on another core in parallel could have snuck in 
and updated the value of that particular object at that particular location. And then what we would be doing is we would be using the old version of v and adding something to that. So now we've got some wacky, inconsistent state because we're applying the operation on an out-of-date value of v. So the only way we're going to let this work is if after we do the read and then we go to do an atomic update, if the value of v is still what it was before. Now, someone could have come in also and made the change to the same value, and this would still work. But it's only if it's changed to a different value that it fails. Really, really, really important to get your head around this. If you can grasp this concept, you'll you have achieved the next level of uh, you know, black beltness in Java concurrency and concurrent understanding. And the reason why this matters is because there is no single lock that is holding across this entire method. The whole method is not a critical section. Only reading something atomically is atomic, and only doing this compare and swap long is atomic if and only if the expected value equals the current value. That's the only way that that happens. So that's why it's done in this very subtle way. It's really subtle. You really got to think about this. Once you have get and add long, then you can do all kinds of other things with that. So um, there are two methods that are part of atomic long and atomic integer and so on called get and increment and get and decrement, which are basically you know, um, variable i plus plus, variable i minus minus. Right? These are just long-winded, verbose ways of saying plus plus and minus minus. But unlike plus plus and minus minus, which are not atomic, get and increment is atomic, and get and decrement is atomic. And you can see how they work. Get and increment simply goes ahead and calls get and add long on this object at the value offset that was computed back in the static initializer part of the class, passing in a 1. So it's going to atomically add 1 to the current value. And get and decrement is going to atomically add minus 1 to the current value. So that obviously increments by 1. And that decrements by 1. And notice how they are built on top of these other lower level unsafe mechanisms. But this code here is just good old Java code. Then there's also another important method. And this is a really important method um, for you guys, for the, for the implementation that you're doing. Compare and set. And compare and set is basically the Java wrapper around a compare and swap. And in this case, it's compare and swap long. Uh, and this is going to basically just provide a nice little Java wrapper around compare and swap long. So you can see that what it does is you pass in the expected value as a long, the updated value as a long, and then it calls compare and swap long in order to do the, the work under the hood. So that's all the same stuff that we looked at before. There's also another cool method called get and update. And this will atomically update the current value with the results of applying the given function and it returns the original value. So this is what this looks like. It also uses the compare and set operation. And as you can see here, uh, what it's going to do, if I can find my clicker, um, it comes in and reads the original value, storing it in prev. Then it applies an update function on the original value, creating a new value. And then it does a compare and set switching the original value to the new value only if it still is the original value at read with get. And once again, because of the fact that there are race conditions here, we have to use compare and set to make this work atomically. So that's another cool method that you need to be aware of. In the last minute or two, let me just quickly show you how things work with atomic Boolean. Atomic Boolean is very much like atomic long. It uses compare and swap int. It has the same concept of using this reflection API to get the offset. It has a volatile value, just like we did before, so it reads going to be atomic. And the only difference here, really, is that unlike atomic long, where you're passing in longs, for atomic Boolean, you're passing in Booleans. But otherwise, it's the same basic idea. So you pass in expected and updated, which would either be true or false, of course. And you can see here that we do compare and swap int, switching the Boolean true to the value 1 and the Boolean false to the value 0. And this will return success if you are able to actually do the, do the swap atomically. And there's also another variable here called set. And set will 
set the value to either one or zero based on what the Boolean is. If it's true, it becomes one. If it's false, it becomes zero. And once again, value is the atomic, this is an atomic volatile, so that will be an atomic operation. And it unilaterally sets it. Unlike compare and, swa compare and set, which only does it if some condition is true, this will just come in and say, I don't care what your current value is, you are now true or you are now false. So armed with this information, you should now be in very good position to be able to do assignment 1B for the spin lock, because that's what you need in order to do that.